Let's move on to our last caller. Um, we have got Kevin in New York. Kevin, you're live with Eric and V. What would you like to talk about? Hey, uh, hey you guys. How you doing? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. Well, um, I wanted to talk about yeah, what's up? Um, well, how I've I've come to an understanding that evidence for God is realizing that our reality is uh, systems uh, based on systems based on systems, and um, and what I mean by that is um, <clears throat> well, well, first of all, there would have been no definition for the word harmony if if that weren't true. That, that thing completely. I'm 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 sorry, but I think we're in deepity land here. I, I don't understand what you mean. You're 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 mixing um actual things with descriptions of things. You're you're treating non corporeal things as if let's let's try that again. You said that there's evidence of God, and the evidence of God is systems upon systems upon systems, right? Yeah. What is yeah, that? Sorry. Um oh. What I mean by that is um, when we look at everything uh, in our reality, um, we see that things that are completely uh, independent of themselves coming together um, to, to form something that would have seemed improbable. Okay, um, so something is improbable. Yeah. Let's 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 go with that. The improbability of something does that have anything to do with the food in my pantry? Is it evidence for the food in my pantry? Uh, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> exactly. You're you're pointing to existing things and saying that it has to relate to a god that's entirely unrelated. Right, we're understanding the world around us, and we're we're discovering. Okay, you know there are systems that 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 arise um, out of this physical universe that we're in. We can talk about you know water tables and how you know rain uh, and evaporation and and the the moving of tides and currents and all of those things. Those are those are forces acting upon the world that are part of that physical world. So, right, so you can talk about systems upon systems upon systems. That is not evidence of things in my pantry, and is definitely not evidence of things that are pointing towards your God. You're talking about well, something entirely it's not, unrelated. It's not, evidence of, it's not evidence of things in your food pantry, but as long as you have food, that's, well, that, that's just another thing. <laughs> right, um, I, 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 I mean... The, the, argument that I, the argument that I hear from atheists, though, is that um, the universe um, has, has an indifference, uh, it has, has an indifferent aspect to it. Which uh, uh, is are, are we? Was their argument that there isn't fine tuning uh, so for Kevin, life, especially human life? Kevin, um, I want to make sure that we're on the same page here. The response to your argument about fine tuning and what the positive statement of other people is—it's. It's it's kind of a little hazy. So definitely, if you want to talk to atheists who who have a statement about the universe that they want to back up, talk to them. Um, I definitely want to talk to you about your argument for fine tuning, um, because I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. You're talking about the fine tuning argument. Yeah. Okay. So um, let me ask you something. Would it be better for humanity if there were more habitable? arable, farmable land on planet Earth? Uh, yes, it would. Okay. Would you say that that would be better tuned for humanity if there were more room and more resources for humans to thrive on the planet? Well, well yes. But, uh, so due to, if, if um, fine tuning doesn't mean optimally tuned. Is there like a margin well, for error here? Well, yeah. Um, it, it's just that I argue that that the universe has had to have, from the very beginning, uh, it, it had to have had a, a nurturing aspect to it. 
or else it wouldn't have worked. Okay, that, but, that is sufficiently vague as to be impossible. That's sufficiently vague as to be impossible to respond to in any meaningful way because I don't think that's a meaningful statement. So let's let's go back and talk about fine tuning. Right? You're saying nurturing aspects, people are nurturing. Things, you know, who who act upon other things are nurturing. You you're you're now creating this um this it's like people who name their Roomba. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're ascribing characteristics to a non-living thing. And even worse, your character, you're, you're ascribing human characteristics to just the way the universe is, as if physics gives a fuck about you. So let's talk about fine tuning, right? Could Earth be yeah. finer tuned? Absolutely. Let's look at the human eye, right? The human eye is brought up as evidence for fine tuning. But here I am wearing glasses. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm just a, a victim of the fall. Okay, well that's fine. Um, if that's the case, why do we have a blind spot right in the middle of our cornea, right in the middle of our eye? There's a nerve bundle. We can see in nature that eyes have evolved without that major hiccup. How come we, how come we don't have that? It seems a whole lot more likely that we adapted to the world around us and that our bodies are evidence of that slow evolution, that slow growth over time to adapt to, to the environment that we're in than it is that we were created for this environment. Uh, but that would, that would imply that, um, that what, what I said wasn't true, that uh, the, the nature of our reality has a nurturing spirit, but you would actually say that it has a competitive spirit to it. I'm and not. That every, I'm not, I'm not applying animism to. I, I, I'm not applying human characteristics to the universe. You're talking about natures. What the fuck is a nature? How can I engage with you in a way that's using language that I neither understand or agree with? Well, um. I, I simply say that because, I mean, I, I speak among things that are already uh, surely known amongst everyone. That really? So why are we why are we disagreeing with you? Anthropomorphic. Thank um, you, crazy Jesse, in the live chat. Uh, anthropomorphic was a word that was escaping me. <laughs> Anthropomorphizing, non. Anyway. It's a, it's a common thing to want to do, especially in the face of realizing that the universe doesn't care about you. That's terrifying to realize for the first time. And when you're trying to figure out how you feel about the universe and how the universe, quote unquote, feels about you, the only reference you have are human emotions and human motivations. So, of course, the instinct is going to be to give those motivations and those emotions to other things. And there's an evolutionary advantage to that, right? If you anticipate motive of something coming towards you, you are better able to prepare to defend yourself. Um, but the the point we're trying to make here is that we aren't, we do not ascribe motive or emotion to the universe. So talking about the universe to us using emotive or motivational language doesn't connect. So if we're going to continue this conversation, which I'd love to do at a later time, um, we will, we're going to have to define terms first and kind of figure out a shared vocabulary so we can actually talk to each other and, and understand what the other people are saying. What V said. Oh, I hear you. It's just that when... When I talk about this, I try to appeal to the uh, scientific aspect of this because that, well, that's the tools that we have, and um, and we can derive evidence for that. But I agree when that I, when science I, when is the I best tool that we have to understand the universe, and I think that next time we can definitely talk more about that. I would love to hear back from you. Absolutely, we're getting the voice in our ear saying that uh, we, we've got to wrap up, uh, but. Do you see oh, okay. that at least where we're coming from as a response to that, that, that providing, um, you know, characteristics that people have to inanimate things isn't getting us anywhere productive? Uh, I hear you. 
I hear you. Yeah. I have to be uh, more specific, I guess. But I'll yeah. really call again. Perfect. Like Please do. Wonderful. Thank you, Kevin. Absolutely. Take care, brother. All right. See, again, it's the it's the you jump off the the Christianese train. It continues to go down the track, and you're like, I used to be able to talk like that. And sometimes you can, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. I I think this is where they're going with this. It's just when you talk about <laughs> having a compassionate or competitive spirit, that's not how people talk in the rest of the world. So you have to go back and be like translating. Trans. Oh, oh, that's what they're trying yeah. to say. So hopefully next time that uh, definitely we can talk more I, I i definitely see a really really awesome point in there that is resonating for me and that is you know if this is true if you know the god of the bible is is there then we should find that evidence we should be able to apply the scientific method and find that evidence yeah and i hope he keeps looking because i i hate to say it it's really really it's a huge bummer when you find out that it's not there but we're not going to police you for thought crimes. You should investigate. Please I want you to know do. as many things about this world as possible. That's what we're here for. Damn straight. That said, 